So we're rewriting the middle term. So I'm not really changing the value of anything. It's just instead of 5x, I have 8x minus 3x. We're all agreed that's the same as 5x, right? The notes from yesterday? And your notes from yesterday? This? No, this is just a random problem. We're just doing this on scratch paper. And then I'm going to bring down the original first term, 2x squared, and the last term, minus 12. And now that I have four terms, this is where the grouping part comes in, right? We have four terms. So I group the first two together, the second two. What's the GCF of the first group? Two x, right? So you write your GCF down, and the leftover factors are going to go in parentheses. So I'm going to divide two x out of each of these things because that's the reverse distributive property. So we're really just doing a bunch of reverse distributive and reverse foils. That's what we're doing here. So that first two, first term when I divide out two x leaves me with the x, and then plus four. And then for that second group, I told you yesterday when it, the first term here is negative that you want to make your GCF a negative. And then what's the GCF for 3x and 12? 3, right? The negative 3. They don't have any x's in common. I'm not making another stupid joke. I'm sorry. Um, negative 3, we're going to divide that out of both terms. Negative 3x divided by negative 3 is a positive x. Okay. Negative 12 divided by negative 3, positive 4. That might seem weird because you might be like, Ms. F, you just totally changed the sign on the stuff. But if you were to distribute that negative back through, you'd have negative 3x minus 12, which is what we started with. So it's okay. And now we look at those two groups. This group compared to this group, what do they have the same now that's in common? x plus 4. So now when we look at the whole thing, now that's the GCF of the entire equation. And so I write my GCF down and I write the leftover factors or the quotients once you divide out the x plus 4. What's left over in this group? 2x. And in this group is minus 3. And that's factored form okay, by using grouping. And from here, we can solve our zero factor property set. Remember, if you have an A thing times a B thing that equals zero, then you can set the A thing equal to zero and the B thing equal to zero. And then solve those. So math, 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 you subtract four from here and get negative four. And on the second equation, you add three, divide by two, and you get three halves. factor by grouping for a trinomial. Um, and just to sort of, this next stuff I'm going to write in green, you don't have to write it down, but I just want to sort of bring back to why we why we like this method. This is a good solid method. There's The pros of this method are, there's no, it will get you the right answer, right? It's a good method. There's no shortcuts or random seeming things that you'll have to remember to do. Um, the con of this method is that it just takes up longer. And that's okay now when we're doing one problem at a time, but when we start solving rational equations um, where there's numerators, denominators, you might have to factor two or three things within one problem, this becomes cumbersome. But it's good. Um, and it's foil backwards, like right here. So this first step where I did the 8x and the minus 3x, I just rewrote the 5. It's like if you were to do FOIL from here, like going backwards, you always get that middle term that you have to, you always have those two terms that are like terms that you combine to get the middle term up there. And so it's really just FOIL backwards. Okay. Um, does anybody need this up before I take this method off? All right. So good solid method takes a long time. Here's the swing method.
starts out the same. What multiplies to A, C, and adds to B. So A, C is negative 24, B is 5. We said 8 and negative 3. So I put B. But here's where the change comes in. It's different from the grouping. At this step, I told you yesterday to divide off by the A term, which is 2. A value. And if you can simplify now, either of those you should. So for example, 8 over 2 becomes 4. And then this one doesn't simplify, so it says it stays negative 3 halves. Yeah, what do you notice about those two numbers from the last method? That's the answers. Um, if you were to write the factored form from here, it's x plus 4, x minus 3 halves equals 0. You could just set those equal to 0 and solve. Did I write 4 on the last one? I might have written something down. Negative 4. Did I just write say that 4 was the answer on the last one instead of negative 4? Wait, isn't that, but it, wait, what? Isn't that the same thing I had, we did on this one? Where, where's the, where's the, where's the difference? Oh no, 4 is this for the factored, but then when I solved it, I got negative 4. So negative 4, 3 halves. Um, the, so the pros of this method is that it's faster. The cons are that it's a shortcut, tricky kind of method, and it obscures some of the actual math that's going on, which might, um, you know, inhibit your understanding of the material. Like, for example, um, when you simplify this step right here, if the problem originally had a greatest common factor that you did not notice to factor out, it would get simplified out here and you wouldn't know that you had that additional factor. That's one downside. Um, another downside I've noticed is that people will keep doing the shortcuts, but then later on when we do higher degree polynomials, they feel like they can stop right here when they really should do some more factoring. Um, and the other con to this is that if you're taking any kind of standardized test for something and it's asking you to put factored form, you'll never see a fraction that like this three halves has factored form. And that's why this is called the swing method. Technically what you're suppo supposed to do if you're factoring only as versus solving, which we did here, is swing that denominator back up here and that would give you 2x minus 3, right? Which is what we got when we did the grouping, the 2x, the 2x minus 3. So I'll be doing swing because it's faster. I am not requiring you to do swing if you don't like it. You're welcome to do the factor by grouping. It's a good, it's a good solid method, okay? You have the rest of class.